Hello and welcome back to part 3 of this latest tutorial from digitalphotographycourses.co.uk My name is Glenn Tilliard If you haven't already seen the version 1, or lesson 1 and lesson 2 then I suggest you nip off and have a quick go through those uh, So just to recap what we've actually done is we've created a little cartoon person here uh, using lots of layers There we go, sort of arms and legs and body and various things and then we save that file as a JPEG file. Uh, when we saved it as a JPEG file, which is this one here, we actually lost all the layer information. Uh, we then cut out the little man using the magic wand tool, just here, and pasted him to a new layer. And there he is sitting on his new layer. Now, just to sort of demonstrate another tool, if I just switch that to the layer off at the moment and just deselect, remember that is. Uh, select deselect or the shortcut control and D. What you can actually do is we can use another tool here for making selections which is called the magnetic lasso tool. And the magnetic lasso tool what it does is it looks at contrast differential and if you just left click and hold and drag around your subject what it will actually do is attempt to stick to the edges of your subject. There we go. And after a little bit of practice, you can get quite quick at this. And as you can see, if you just go off there and make a mistake, then the easy way to do is just hit the backspace button until you go back. There we go. And you can gradually work your way around. Whoops, there we are. The subject. Now, this is nice and easy on something that's um, with a little bit of contrast to it. If you've got something where the contrast is not that high, it becomes a little bit more difficult and if you find it starts to get troublesome then what you can actually do is you can click at anchor points so as you go along just click at anchor points there you go I'm not actually holding the mouse button now down there at all it's actually just sort of keeping track as it goes around but if I do start to have problems then I just click and that makes an anchor point for me now when it gets to the end it will change the, uh, the sort of cursor will get a little circle attached to it you can see the magnet there with a little it's all round circle underneath it. Once you get to that point, that's your closing point, and you can double click. Whoops, that was obviously a triple click. If that happens, just try pressing Ctrl Z. Oops, there it is. There we go. That's it. There we go. Like that. Um, sometimes you kind of can click too many times and it goes away. So there we are. That's selected our little man. Unlike the magic wand method, which selected the white background. This time we have actually selected the little man, and if we want to paste into a new layer, it's uh, it's edit copy and edit paste. Remember, we can actually go Control J, which does the job a lot quicker. And I say I like so this was uh, I like the quicker sort of methods. So this was actually the second time we did it, and this was the first time we did it. Okay, so we don't need all of these. So what we'll do is we'll just get rid of the top one, we only need the one. There we go, pop them in the bin. And this is the background layer. Okay, so you notice now we've got two copies of the chap. One, he's on a white background and he's fixed that. And then on the second one, he's actually floating in midair. And this is the layer that we're interested in. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to move this picture of the little man and we're going to put him on a bit another picture. That looks to me like uh, you could do with a holiday. So what we have down here is a nice seaside beach picture. I'll just bring this up. There we go. And what we're going to do is put this little chap into this picture. So the first thing we need to do is we need to select the move tool. And there's a couple of different ways of doing this. I'll show you both. We can either click on the little man. Here we go. Remember, so what we're actually doing is clicking on this layer here. Click on the little man, left click, hold, and drag. And once you get over the second photograph, you'll see that it changes to a plus symbol. We now release there. He is. Now, because of the magnification of these two pictures, it's actually a little bit large. Yeah, so that's not a problem. We can actually make him smaller. And the way we make him smaller is we transform him using what's called the free transform tool 
And the quickest and easiest way to bring that tool up, I say, I always like the shortcuts, is to press Control if you've got a PC or Command if you've got a Mac, Control and T. And you'll see you get this bounding box. I just make the image a wee bit smaller by pressing Control and minus. There we go. We can see the whole of the box. And that box represents the size of the of the layer of the subject. If we now go to one of the corners, now you've got to be careful here because if you just go upwards, you can squish your person. So what we need to do is we need to do what's called constrain proportions. And the way we do that is by pressing down the shift key. I'm just pressing the shift key on my keyboard, go to the corner and then drag up. If you release the shift key, then you can squish him. As soon as you press the shift key, he maintains his proportion. See, and press the shift key down to constrain proportion, and then make the guy a little bit smaller to the right size. Once you're happy, press the enter, and now we can move him back. There we go. Make this picture a bit bigger by pressing Control and Plus. Uh, whoops, too far. There we go. And if we now look at this photograph, what we'll actually see is we have a layer, and we've got layer one and layer two. So this layer is actually the mine. This seems to have lost its little uh, icon at the moment, but not to worry about that. So once we can, once he's on there, we can move him about. We can transform him, control T again, make him a little bit smaller if we want to. Just control the portions again, there we go. You can either press enter, return, or double click within the image to set it. There we are, moving that uh, shout into you to come on hot that. Remember, if we save this image and we want to keep layers intact, we need to save it as a PSD file. And if we're happy to flatten it and maybe we want to email it to a friend, we can then save it as a JPEG file. So that, in a quick and very silly way, is how to uh, create layers in Photoshop, how to cut them out, and how to move uh, one layer from another image into the second one. I did say I'd show you two methods of doing this. So if I just go to the layer pipe for one second and switch this layer off, in fact, I tell you what, we'll delete it completely, drop it in there. I'll show you the other method. So we go to our first picture, we go to layers, and this time instead of picking up the little man from here and dragging it into the picture, we can actually pick up the, the actual layer itself and drag it into the picture. And it has exactly the same effect. Control T for transform. I'm just going to hit Control minus a couple of times just so I can see the old image. There we go. Press the shift key down to constrain, resize. Press enter to accept, move the little chap around, pick a couple of control pluses, just to, there we go, get him in the right position. And that concludes this section on using layers and doing very simple cutouts. Obviously, the ones you'll have will probably be a lot more complicated, but the basic technique remains the same. So, thank you for watching this digitalphotographycourses.co.uk tutorial. My name is Glenn Tilliard. And I'll see you again soon.